Hello everyone, it is an extremely stormy day here on TRAPPIST-1E as I continue my hard career with stock parts in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 in the TRAPPIST system. And yeah, we can't even see the city over there and can barely see the bridge, which is sort of atmospheric. So yeah, well, uh, the effects, the volumetric clouds, I guess, is what's doing this, uh, are in full force here. And the weather is sort of mirroring my my discontent with the whole situation because we're in a bind really and the main part of the bind is that we're limited to 30 parts and we can't see patch conics those are the two big things uh, we're close to being able to see patch conics but we're not there and as long as we have 30 parts I can't milk any more Delta V out of the rocket that we've been using uh, and in particular let's take a look at it uh, so this was the moon return version, and this had the ants, there's a spark, there's a terrier, and then there's the swivel, and then boosters, and this gets 9,800, uh, sorry, 9,484 meters per second, and that's to, uh, the goal was to get into orbit around the moon and come back, but it has no way enough delta V for that business, so return to Kerbin from orbit of the moon. And that's why we have the heat shield and parachute. But we can't really do that. We There's also position satellite and polar orbit of the moon. For that, we had previously tried this one. And that had 11,528. And that like barely made orbit around the moon. Uh, and we couldn't get it into uh, the polar orbit that we needed it. Uh, and we would be able to if we had the patch conics. But I can't really see our trajectory to the moon at all to plan ahead to get it into the orbit that we need. So we at least need the 300,000, but in order to have the 300,000 to unlock the tracking station, I would need to fulfill some contract or another. We've seen that trying to fill the Tomfin contract, the rescue contract, is really hard because of our comm system right now. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to try to set up some extra comms, but we should try to get some new science uh, so that we can unlock larger tanks, because if we have larger tanks, then we don't have to use as many parts on our rocket, and we can make larger rockets. And in particular, we could use liquid boosters instead of the solid boosters. So we really want to get like these tanks over here, but that's 90 and we still would require general construction, so that's 135. Another thing is maybe getting the kickbacks, so larger boosters, and or the Pollux here. And uh, actually the Pollux is much larger than the kickback, right? Yeah. So, and I think it has, no, it doesn't have gimbling. That could be a problem. But yeah, in terms of part count, that would be ideal. They have 140 tons as our limit on the pad. Uh, the Bobcat would be good because it's 2 tons, whereas the Swivel is 1.5, so it's not that much heavier, but it's got nearly 2 times the thrust. And when you see the engine ISP, the Swivel has 250 seconds at sea level, whereas the Bobcat is 290. So that's a lot better. Uh, so maybe if we could just get 90 and get the Bobcat, we could save a lot of trouble. But... That, and that would give us the bigger boosters as well. Though that would be best if we also had big tanks. So, in order to do this, we need to set up commsats like the ones that we had before. We had three commsats here, but they were too high up, it turns out. They were in these orbits, and that was because of comms, <laughs> that we couldn't put them into anything a little bit nicer. Uh, so, we are going to try to get them in lower orbits so it's easier to communicate with them. And maybe put extra antennas on them, and that'll be the goal. But in order to get science, I'm going to try to launch them with the Science Junior. Or at least one or two of them with the Science Junior. So, we've been using the Ant and the Spark because we had contracts to test them and we've been abusing those. Okay, Science Junior. Well... That's still a healthy amount of Delta V up there. But we only have part count for one antenna. Well, this is going to... to Kerbin orbit, or, you know, Turbin orbit. Hmm. I think 
we'll just omit the ant stage. I'm really, really interested in comms, so since we dumped the ant stage, I'm going to use four antennae here. We should be able to get into a nice enough orbit like this as long as we maintain comms, so... Yeah. This is not a moon orbiter, this is low comsat. With Science Junior, let's see. Of course, the Science Junior would be better if we brought it back, but just trying to package it in with this sort of thing, and we'll get what we can get. Well, at least the weather is consistent. Uh, okay, um, conducting the material study. Well, it's 4.5 science here. Let's just keep that and recover vessel. I, I need the science. Okay, and launch again. We should do some low atmospheric ones. And high atmospheric ones. Okay, throttle up, SAS is on, and launch. Off we go. I'm not gonna turn quickly because we want to keep comms with the space center. Well, not to mention not flipping would be nice. We don't need to put anything into incline. Uh oh, flipping. Flipping. Uh. Yeah, we don't need to put anything into inclined orbits because we're not going into those unless they tell us. Well, we're going into an inclined orbit right now, but that was not my intention. Come on, back over, back over. Okay, booster set. Okay, now we can turn. Oh, we turned too much. But you know, it's not like we have part count available for fins or anything. That's a lot of cloud. <laughs> that is a lot of cloud right there. I'm really looking for with this one is the high over Kerbin signs. We'll probably be able to retrieve the low over Kerbin. Okay, staging. Alright, well, right now we have sort of a yellowish, greenish yellowish line to that commsat, but at this distance, so that's not really long. But as we run out here, I think at least this one won't. At least this one, I think, will not end up losing comms and just sort of being dumb fired into orbit. I'm deliberately going high though. Okay, we're in orbit without having lost comms. Uh, we've got a 1,000 kilometer apoapsis there. I'm gonna coast to that apoapsis and then try to circularize, but uh, that little satellite helped, but probably we were in comm connection the whole time directly anyway. There's not that high up 1,000 kilometers over this particular planet. This particular version, up. Oh, I passed it. Uh, particular version of Kerbin. Anyway, this type of satellite is meant to bridge the gap that we have between the higher up ones and the actual missions. Well, I'm gonna transmit this 11 science from high up. Uh, actually, hold on. Hmm. Maybe... Maybe that's actually not a good idea in terms of our battery power. Let's make sure I'm in daylight first. So actually, we're going a little bit high there. That's uh, 228. I'd like it a little bit lower. 2000 by 1000 is probably what I want. Okay, we are currently recharging, though not optimally. Okay. So now... View data, transmit. Uh, it's close, but not close enough. And we can't transmit partial, apparently. 
Okay, so we'll actually need more batteries to get that much. Maybe I should just not put the science juniors on, but I'm not planning to put these in higher orbit anyway, but then the science juniors cost extra, so. So we can see there's a, a red line going up to that one now. So a tenuous line. So hopefully these will help everything communicate with each other. And when I say these, we need to launch a few more. So as this regains power, let's go back to Space Center and get more of such satellites. As it continues to be stormy. But that thankfully does not deter our ability to launch. So I'll wait until morning. Maybe the weather will pass. Okay, a sunnier day. Yeah, well, I can't put extra battery anyway because we're at a part limit. I mean, we could use the bigger batteries, the inline ones, have double the charge. Uh, well, Eleven Science is worth it. All right, fine. That's a little bit ridiculous. I don't suppose these could be side attached. No, no. Um, we've got to tuck them into the nose cone, thank you. It's not like the nose cone is going to complain about that. Okay, well, at the very least, we will get the commsat up. And if we get the 11 signs from the science junior, that's good too. I'm not phasing them precisely. They'll wander anyway. I mean, it's probably inevitable. So we just need enough of them, and then before we launch, we'll just make sure... Uh, the problem is, it's not a matter of launch. It's a matter of getting to that Kerbal-stranded Tomfin. That, that's really the purpose of all these commsats, was to try to get to Tomfin and rescue Tomfin. And we need a lot of comms so that our automated rescue system can maintain comms in order to get to him. So that's tricky. Alright, SAS on, throttle up, and launch. But we will just pay attention to comms and try our best. We will try to rescue Tompin again. That will clear one contract slot and then allowing us to pick up another contract, which will hopefully be lucrative. Though, so I don't know if I'm ever going to get to 300,000 at this rate. We will see, it depends on the contracts they offer. Okay, I'm going to try to not flip this time. I really will just go steeply here. I'm not going to turn it. <laughs> it's better than flip. Oh no, it's flipping. It's flipping. Uh, okay, it's inevitable. No, don't go retrograde. Whatever you do, don't go retrograde. Whatever. Okay, booster set. Ooh, knocked. Uh, no, we're just doing it again. No, don't go down. Someday we'll be able to get fins. I mean, we've got rockets that don't flip. I mean, it's not like we always flip or anything. It's just that we always flip with this one. All right, and staging and ignition. As far as comm support is concerned, we've got a line down, but we don't have a line up to that satellite. That's too much of a stretch. But wait, I haven't extended the comm dishes yet. Let's see if we get a line up to that one. If we do, I'll actually flatten out a little bit. Um, no, I think that's too much. So from here to there, that's too much even for the four dishes we have here. And whatever it has over there. Alright, and staging. And finally the spark. Probably don't need to keep that much. Alright, now we have a uh, red line to that satellite, so that's that's the maximum stretch right there. Okay, we've made orbits and shutting down at, let's say, 1,000-ish. Okay, coasting. Now we're actually communicating just through that commsat. Okay, well, while we have direct comms, let me try to 
conduct a material study and transmit okay we got that 11 science and raising our orbit okay 2000 kilometers there it's not exactly the same orbit but it's the orbit we're going to leave it in and why don't I just go ahead and make sure that the solar panels keep recharging it let's just leave it there and I mean, do I really need another one? I don't know. I think it'll be fine if our rescue mission has four antennae. Let me see what the rescue mission looks like. Maybe it doesn't have enough part count room for that sort of thing, but let's see. Yeah, it's a 30 out of 30. Then again, it's, it's sort of using the terrier over here. It probably should, I don't know. We could replace these with solids, or even get rid of them altogether, potentially. No, well, not altogether, potentially. Uh, well, that's 30 out of 30 with three antennas on it. Not a whole lot of extra delta V, though. And a lot more thrust weight ratio than we need. Well, I don't actually see the purpose of putting the spark here. See the spark? That's 2,900. I mean, if we just put a little bit more fuel here, that'll do the trick. Well, all those antennae are pretty heavy, huh? Well, yeah, I don't know how much extra this is going to have in orbit once it makes orbit, so that's a little bit tough. Especially since it might flip. We don't have the ant this time, though. It's not as tall. It's got more reaction wheel torque. Alright, let me just see if 3 and 10 I will work and do the trick for us or not. No Kerbal inside, please. Jab. Alright. We can't target Tomfin. The other rescue one was right there. Tomfin is here. Tomfin is really low. I don't feel like there's a super amount of comm support here. Well, that one just picked up. Gonna wait until, well, let's say when Tompkins right there-ish. Get what the orbital velocity, uh, not velocities, but the orbital periods are around here. Well, we want him a little bit ahead so we catch up. Well, no, but he's in a pretty low orbit, so maybe catching up is rough. Go a little bit higher. Okay, throttle up, SAS is on, and here goes nothing. I think throttling down the boosters might help. Throttle limiting the boosters. Okay, let's reset. Alright, we did not flip. That explosion was not detrimental. Tompin is there. We have a commsat overhead. I like to match altitudes on this side, the lit side, and then have the opposite side be the one that we're higher than Tompin. We're still doing a rendezvous without really being able to make maneuver nodes. Okay, staging. And let's get the antennae out. Okay, hold on a sec. Well, maybe we could coast a little bit. Can we hang out here and wait for it? <laughs> How far away it is. I don't think we can wait for it like that. The reserve enough fuel to come back down, though. Okay, well... I'm gonna say that. And I think... 
Tomfin will catch up with us over time. Let's find out. Oh, we lost power. Uh, is there some time that we're gonna get that back? Uh oh. No. Oh, we're getting it back. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, let's orient a little bit better here. Uh, right around here, we're close to the same level. It goes above me there. Oh, we have a different inclination. Oh no. I was not expecting that. Uh, that might cost a lot around here. Okay, 226. I don't know, let's see. Um, so... Now can we see him? <laughs> uh, yes we can. Okay, Thompson, Tompfin's derelict is right there. We've only got 226 though. Oh, it got a head. That altitude's so low. Well, now I'm just gonna wait a whole other deal. So, Tompkins got an ahead, but I'll wait till Tompkins behind again. For some reason, the icon for Tompkins derelict is not showing up at all. Or. Neither icon is showing up at all. Oh, that was a Duna window. Well, we're not doing that right now. There's a lot of Duna windows anyway. Well, we can't see <laughs> when to go back very easily when the icons don't show up. Why are the icons not showing up? They're not debris. I like debris doesn't bring them up either. So I don't know why it's like this. Everything else has icons. Thompson's, Thompson's derelict is maybe catching up to the other uh, Delta NK. Let me just see what the situation is for the previous rescue mission. Still got 400 here, which is better than the other one. But it doesn't have as much comms. I mean, the fact that Tompkins derelict gets down to 50 kilometers in altitude is sort of the problem here. Maybe we should just reject rescuing Tompkin. Okay, they're really close together there. Well, there's something I'm not understanding about how I'm supposed to do this because uh, what I thought was a real burn to help the situation did not end up being a real burn that helps the situation. Uh, it's got past us. Okay, then once because it gets so low, 50 kilometers, once it's past us, there's no way. So back with the other rescue vessel, but maybe this is barking up the wrong tree. Okay, let me jump to the rescue vessel and see what we can do, but we don't have a lot of Delta V. I mean, 50. 50 away, but... Well, there's an inclination thing, and also... Tompin dipping into the atmosphere thing. I swear this will be the last time I try to rescue Tompin. Um, well, we have a target, but it's not a good idea to try to do anything right now like that. And we don't have control anyway. Okay, now we do. The satellites are helping. Just want Tompkin to close minimally. Not, uh, we're gonna have trouble if I go into the atmosphere myself. And since we really get close, I'll try to correct the inclination again. It's really tough to judge though. Now I have 200 meters per second left. I'm assuming 100 will be good enough for deorbiting. 60 kilometers away. Okay, he's going away by 5 kilometers each orbit, so... I'm going to raise my orbit here. Just a little bit. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, we're uh, getting close to render range here. And I can't see him anymore on this. Okay, hold on. Oh, it disappeared here too. Where did you go? Where did you go? Target. Hey. There. You gonna get within render range? No. Okay, um, we're gonna have to correct that immediately. Come on. Okay, we should be able to switch to Tomfin, but that's a long EVA. No mod propellant. Oh, well, Tomfin better have mod propellant when the EVA is. <laughs> like, we're not playing that game. Okay, Tomfin, you got a long EVA. They put him in the atmosphere for a reason. <laughs> Okay, well, we didn't need the calm dish anyway, because we have him in here. We have 155. That should be enough to deorbit. Okay, well, and uh, is this... Tomfin's a scientist, so Tomfin can't hold retrograde, which is a whole other thing. And our probe core can't either. Well, I think we'll just retro burn now. And see what happens. I'm gonna try 33 and it, I, I'm actually gonna save. I I don't know, I, I don't think I have loading of saves, but... Gosh now, we've, we've done enough work on this that... I'll just copy the save file as the persistent file if this goes horribly wrong. Okay. Off goes that. Limited, ooh, limited control here. Well, it'll be in the dark though. Even fine movements of my control stick do a little bit too much. Maybe I should tune down the reaction wheel. Blader is ablating already. And slow down enough. Uh, again, the steeper re-entries are definitely better. This was not a steep re-entry. If that turns out to be a problem, I will totally load the save and make it a steeper re-entry. Well, Tomfin seems happy. I think we're gonna run out of a blader. And that's the end of the ablator. But, um, well, I don't know what it does really. <laughs> sure, it does something. Right? Except just weigh some extra mass that causes us problems. I mean, it must do something useful, right? The ablator. All right, down to curb and orbital speeds. I mean, regular stop curb and orbital speeds. And we are through. So mean that there aren't any further menaces, but we will see. I don't know what this blackness is below us. I think it might be a cloud. I think that's a cloud. But anyway, deploying chute. But what lays beneath the cloud? Just the most boring terrain you could imagine. The important thing about this is it clears up a spot in our contracts, but uh, it's cost a lot, so. I don't know if it really gets us closer to 300,000. Okay, well... Okay, good, good. 
Um, crew report. Well, keep. Uh, EVA. EVA report. Just deserts. We've done it before, apparently. Uh, can you get a surface sample yet? No. Alright, recover. Alright. Well, we did that, but we really haven't gotten any closer to unlocking the tracking station, the funds for it anyway. But at least that's one contract slot available. I don't want any It keeps giving me temperature surveys. I've already got two sets of temperature surveys of the moon, okay? And I'm not doing any more rescues. Test the terrier splash down. It's not gonna happen. And science day from the surface of the moon. We are a long way off from. Ah, <sighs> it's going to be rough. We just have to fulfill some of these things. And the tough part is just getting into orbit around the moon. I mean, I don't think if I make the moon bigger. I mean, if I make the moon bigger, it'll be easier to make orbit around it. But then it'll be harder to land on it. So it's like. The double-edged sword at that point. So, yeah. Anyway, at least we got something done in this episode. Uh, it's really tight right now as far as what we can and can't do. And we'll need more science in order to be able to build a rocket to really do the moon orbit missions properly. Of course, getting the tracking station upgrade could help too because it'll save me some Delta V because I'll be able to plan. But anyway, for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.